Hi, welcome to another video of my Cisco Meraki series. If you follow the channel, you probably know what we have done so far. But just as a reminder, I'll go over them very quickly. In the first video, we talked a little bit about the cloud-based network management system of Cisco Meraki and how it is much simpler than the traditional network management. We also connected an MX64 security appliance to the network and made sure it was online in the Meraki dashboard. In the second video, we talked about how we can troubleshoot in case for any reason the MX64 cannot connect to the Meraki cloud and basically showing offline in the Meraki dashboard. In the third and last video, we added two more Meraki devices to the network, one MS228P switch and one MR18 access point. We basically configured all three devices according to my network plan and made sure they would function as I needed. However, right now I'm only making use of very limited features of my Meraki devices. These are actually loaded with many more features. So my plan is to step by step, video by video, use more and more features and share with you in tutorial kind of videos. Hopefully eventually we're going to have a very professional Meraki network here. So for now and in this video, we're going to set up client VPN. Basically in this setup, the MX is going to be the VPN server and the clients which are end devices such as computers, tablets and phones can connect to the server to establish a VPN connection. Obviously the main benefit of using client VPN would be to be able to remotely connect to your network and access your local network resources. However, since the VPN connection is private and secure, another benefit of using it would be to add an extra layer of security to your internet connection. For example, let's say you're using an unsecure public Wi-Fi, then you can use a VPN connection to make your internet connection more secure. So before we get to the client VPN, I just wanted to point out that there is another type of VPN called site to site VPN, which we're going to talk about later in another video. So if you are interested, please make sure you have subscribed and activated the bell notification. This way you would know as soon as the next video is ready. Cisco Meraki uses L2TP tunneling protocol for the client VPN. There are different types of VPN and we already talked about PPTP and OpenVPN, but Meraki only supports L2TP. As part of the client VPN configuration, I will need to configure the server so the VPN service is enabled and basically it is ready for the clients to connect. But I will also need to configure the client or clients so they would know about this server. For example, what is the IP address of the server, what is the VPN protocol and so on and so forth. With L2TP, when you want to configure the client devices to connect to the server, if there are Windows, Mac OS, iOS or Android devices, you can use the built-in VPN software and you don't need to install anything additional. But if you remember with the OpenVPN, we actually had to install the OpenVPN software on each client. Now let's start with the server configuration. The client VPN service is available on Meraki security appliances. In my case, the server would be the MX64 and the configuration is obviously done through the Meraki dashboard. First things first, I should enable the client VPN service here. Hostname is basically the dynamic DNS or DDNS address of the server. This is the address that the clients would use to connect to the server. They can also use the public IP address of the server for that purpose. But if the public IP address is dynamic and not static, it might change from time to time. So in that case, the better way would be to use the DDNS address, which is not going to change. Client VPN subnet. This is the subnet which is going to be used for the connected VPN clients. This subnet should not be used anywhere else in my network. Basically, it's an unused subnet only for the VPN clients. DNS name servers. This is the DNS service that the clients will use to resolve host names. I can choose Google Public DNS, Cisco Umbrella DNS, or specify the IP address of a custom DNS. 
Win server. This is something that should be used if the clients need to resolve net bias names. Basically, if they use net bias names to access some network resources. This is not something I want to use for now, so I'll keep it disabled. Secret. This is actually a shared key which is going to be used to establish the VPN connection. I will use whatever key I specify here on the clients too, which we will get to that later. Authentication. This is actually where we can determine if the clients really are who they say they are. And we can do it a couple of different ways. If I have an active directory, for example, I can add it here. If I have a radius server, I can add it here. Or let's say if I have neither, then I can use the Meraki cloud authentication. This way, in the user management section, I can create users for the VPN clients. Systems Manager Sentry VPN Security. This is the kind of feature that can simplify the process of configuring the clients, especially if there are too many of them. But I need to have an MDN Systems Manager network in my Meraki dashboard organization, and the client devices must be enrolled in the Systems Manager. So this is actually not something that I want to use for now. Maybe it could be the subject of another video later. So I'll keep it disabled for now. Okay, now we are pretty much done configuring the server. I just need to make sure that I have saved the page. Now I'm going to first set up my Android phone to connect to the server and then do the same thing with my Windows 10 laptop. My Android version is 9. Other versions might be slightly different, but the concept is going to be the same. So in order to add a new VPN connection, I should go to the settings network and internet and then under advanced tab go to the vpn and here i can add a new connection i'm gonna name it meraki but the name doesn't really matter it can be anything what really matters is the vpn type which should be l2tp ipsec pre-shared key or psk the server address, as I said earlier, is going to be either the public IP address of the server or its DDNS address. If you remember, we entered a secret key on the server side. Now I'm going to enter the exact same phrase here in the IPsec pre-shared key section. And finally, I'm going to enter the username and password, save the page and try to connect. Now I'm on my Windows 10 machine. I'm going to search for VPN settings. Here I'm going to add a new VPN connection and the VPN provider would be Windows built-in. The rest on this page as you can see is actually very similar to what we did on the Android phone. Now there is something else I need to do which I didn't have to do on the Android phone. In the network connection, I'm going to right click on the VPN profile I just created and go to the properties and under the security tab, make the following changes. Now I can try to connect. Yay! 
Alright, the client VPN seems to be up and running, which is good. But there are actually times that even though everything seems to be configured correctly, we might still not be able to connect to the server. So if this video gets at least 100 likes, then I'm also going to make a Meraki client VPN troubleshooting video and go over some troubleshooting techniques so we can make sure we can successfully connect to the server. So please don't forget to hit that like button if you are interested and subscribe to the channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.